Chabad was somewhat appealing, although initially it was a little, it was a little, it was, you know, so different from from how we live, and yet uh, the warmth that specifically Fl the Flinkensteins and uh, Moshe Teldon and his wife drew me in, and one thing led to another, and over time we became more and more involved. And then, you know, a natural progression was to take a trip to New York just for the day, just to sort of see what that was all about, see where Chabad more or less comes from, the, you know, between 770 and Crown Heights and the Ohel. After probably being asked for a year or more to do it, I finally decided to do it. So anyway, we started out early in the morning at the Ohel, and it's very common for people all over the world to either send a prayer in writing to the Ohel through somebody, or when you're at the Ohel, they have little pieces of paper and, and pens to write, you know, in your own language, something that inspires you or perhaps a prayer. And as you daven, to leave it actually on the Rebbe's grave. And so it's covered it's with, with all of these, you know, white pieces of paper. One of my four children, uh, my son, so he had had a girlfriend for, at the time, about seven years. And they had dated all, well, not all through high school, but most of high school and all through college. And now Nathan was, I guess, about 24, 23 or 24. And he was out of school a year or so. And, and his girlfriend was not Jewish in any way, shape or form, and wasn't interested in becoming Jewish to the best of my knowledge. And that seemed to be pulling it at Nathan and sort of pulling him away from maybe his family and away from Judaism and away from the whole notion of praying or being a good Jew or going on birthright or anything that had to, to, to do with being Jewish. And I thought, you know, sitting there at that time with my son struggling with uh, just feeling good about himself and good about who he is and where he comes from, that, um, that I should maybe make a prayer that it seemed appropriate at that place at that time to make the prayer that, that whatever were to happen, that he, would, that he would marry a Jewish girl. So the process is you're in the visitor center when you write your prayer down and, and you, you, you prepare yourself and so forth. You have to walk a little bit down the path and you're in the actual Ohel right at the grave and there's some Tehillim and there's some davening. And so I did all of that and I had the prayer that I had prepared and I just you know left it on the, on the grave and did some silent praying to myself. What happened was now there's, it's been about 15 minutes between when I was actually davening and I left the prayer and I had left the visitor center and was outside of the, 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 the cemetery. And as I opened the door, my phone rings, I pick up my phone, it's my wife. And um, she normally wouldn't be calling me, so I didn't know why she called. I pick up the phone and she's crying in a, in a, in a, in a, in a very, almost a, a really distraught way. And so I was really worried. You know, all kinds of thoughts are going through and she's really crying. And when she caught her breath, you know, I'm like, what's wrong? What t you gotta calm down, tell me what's happened. Exactly 15 minutes previous to her calling me, which probably not coincidentally, which was when I was placing the prayer onto the grave, my son was having a knock on his door and his girlfriend of seven years, who's not Jewish, Knocked on his door, he answered, and she said, I want you to know we're breaking up. And she didn't give a reason, and it wasn't like a fight. In fact, they hardly ever fought. There was almost probably no breakups, but this was, we're done for good, that's it. And so my son called my wife crying, and my wife called me crying, and I had just walked out of the Ohel and put the two together that these things happen like simultaneously. When my wife was crying and I was settling her down, she says to me, what did you do? She said, what did you do? I mean, she put it together right away and she was probably mad at me. I, and then I spoke to him right afterwards to try to settle him down and give him some perspective. And uh, he also said to me, oh my, he's like, what did you say? They both made that connection because for one thing, there was no other explanation. I, I mean, it's almost as if you're basically witnessing a miracle in, in front of your very own eyes. It's very hard to explain it any other way. You know, the, the, the chances scientifically that something like that would happen at the same exact moment and all of that, it's like one in a you know, million or millions of chance. It's now been a whole year, or right around a year since this has happened. And, and anyway, I, I can't say 100% for sure, 
but he, he sort of has a relationship with a nice Jewish girl. She went to Jewish day school and she's, she's just a great girl that I, I know and they have a little bit of a relationship. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But from where he was back then to where he is right now, he's from like the bottom of the valley to the top of the mountains. <laughs>